You might not have been able to see it, but Krista's up here doing the motions from Vacation Bible School. Some of you may know the, know the motions as well. Wonderful. Well, good morning and welcome to Linden Linthicum United Methodist Church. It is a joyful day um, in, on this day because we're doing some special things and that'll be clear in a couple of minutes. Um, it is also wonderful to welcome the folks who are at home, and we uh, know that you're there, and we are glad to be a part of a worshiping body, worshiping body that extends uh, beyond what this particular space holds, and so we're glad that you're there. Whoever you are and wherever you come from and whatever you believe or whatever you doubt, you are welcome here, and we will journey together, so it is great to be together this morning. One of the things we do when we're together is to pray for the things that are of concern or, um, or our celebrations for each other. So if you have a prayer request, if you're here, there are pew cards or um, prayer request cards in the uh, rack in front of you. And uh, so you can fill one of those out and give it to Gigi uh, during the passing of the peace in a few minutes. If you are at home, you can send your prayer requests by email to Dave and he will be glad to make sure that we get those and we can share those requests together. 
the disciples were still gathered in a home in Jerusalem. They were trying to make sense of their world. I bet we can all relate to that, trying to make sense of our world. You've probably felt that sometimes too. Our world gets disrupted often enough. Theirs got completely turned upside down. Everything was very different than it had ever been before. Jesus, their dear friend and leader and Lord, had been tried and publicly mocked and brutally crucified. Fear had caused some of them to witness his death from a distance. But they had all come close to each other in their grief. And as they attempted to hatch a go-forward plan, Jesus appeared unannounced again. They were sure of very little at that moment. But one thing they did know was they, they needed to stick together, at least for a while. They belonged in that group of frightened, grieving, and confused people. They didn't have to explain themselves or wonder if they fit in. They knew that they belonged. Some of us, as we think about that occasion, might have a mental image of a pristine Jesus, maybe dazzling white, kind of like is described at the Transfiguration. I am not sure that that's exactly what the disciples saw in the story that we're going to hear today. Remember that Jesus had been beaten and crucified and buried, and when Mary saw him in the garden, she thought he was the gardener. Uh, so that might be a clue as to what he looked like physically at that moment. But they knew where they belonged, or at least with whom they belonged, and Jesus' appearance helped them to think about how they were to behave in the world, to live as followers of a crucified and risen Savior. So today, as we celebrate the sacrament of baptism and the reception of new members, we are reminded that the membranes encircling communities of faith are porous. We celebrate the presence of each person that God leads to this part of Christ's body. May we continue to be bound together in love and in service. Please join me in our opening prayer, written by poet James Weldon Johnson. O oh Lord, we come this morning, knee bowed and body bent, before thy throne of grace. O oh Lord, this morning, bow our hearts beneath our knees, and our knees in some lonesome valley. We come this morning, like empty pitchers to a full fount with no merits of our own. O oh Lord, open up a window of heaven and lean out far of the battlements of glory and listen this morning. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is an Easter hymn written by British pastor, poet, and biblical scholar Brian Wren. The year was 1968. And Easter that year was just 10 days after Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had been assassinated in Memphis. Dr. Wren wrote this text as a testimony to the power of the risen Christ, even and perhaps especially when the world brings its worst. Please rise now in posture or spirit to join in singing Christ is Alive in the United Methodist Hymnal 318.
many hymns speak to the power of Christian community. One of the, one of the hymns we sing with gusto here is Draw the Circle Wide, which says that no one stands alone. We stand side by side. Won't you turn now and offer the peace of Christ to one another, because in God's house, no one stands alone. May I invite my young friends to come and sit up here with me for a moment. Hey, TJ. How's everybody? Is everybody good? Okay, I'm glad. I'm glad to see you guys. Um, I just wondered if anybody noticed that there's something in the middle of this. This area is called the chancel. Um, and I wondered if anybody noticed that in that area, there's something that's sitting there that is not always sitting there. Did you notice that? Did you notice? Did you notice? Yeah. Anybody else notice when you came in, did you say, hmm, that's not always there? You know why, so you, sh you have, you, don't tell everybody yet. You're not telling anybody. Okay, good. You know what it is because you know why? Why, why did you say you know why, Simon? Because you have a brother who's younger than you, right? Yeah, okay. TJ, you know what it is? Yes. What is it? It's, it's a toss. It's a what? A toss. A toss. Toss? Cross. cross. Oh, there's a cross on top. Yes, there is a cross on top. I'm sorry, it, my hearing, it's not your, you're fine. Um, there is a cross on top, but what's underneath the cross? There is a cross on top, and you are absolutely right. What is underneath that cross? Besides, it looks like a little cabinet, right, maybe, or a, a, like a stand of some kind. But there might be something else in it. What do you think it is? It looks like a pedestal where you could put something, but this is a special. There, this one, there's something inside it. There is water inside, right? You knew that, yeah. All right, now, these guys knew this. Uh, Leah and Ashlyn knew this because yesterday we were talking about a special occasion that's going to be theirs next week. So, yeah. I did show you. So, um... So there's water in here, and what do we use the water for? A water bottle. Well, 
It's not a bad idea, but in this case, no, because the way that the water is in there, it would be really hard to fill your water bottle from that. Um, and I'll show you so you can see that that's true. It's a water with, it's a bowl with water, right? Do you want to see? Okay, come on up here. Let's all look while I throw my things on the floor. Okay, let's look. Let's just take a look. All right, now this is really cool. Somebody made this a long time ago, and this actually slides. Isn't that cool? Very cool. It slides, and there's water inside. So you can see, Oliver, can you see that that would be hard to fill your water bottle from this, right? There's not like a spigot or anything like that. It would be difficult. So what do you do is you slurp it up and then put it in your water bottle. Oh, yeah, if you had a thing to do that, you could do that. Yeah. yeah. That's right. That's exactly. So, um, so that's going to happen next week for you two, but who's that going to happen for today? You guys, right? Yeah. So this is, this is called, this is for a, this is a baptismal font. That's uh, what the word is, but um, it's the place where we put the water uh, for baptism. And when we have baptism, um, what we're doing is saying to God, this person is yours. Um, and we're going to bless them in a very special way. So today, um, Mackenzie and Madison and Riley are going to be baptized. And some of, a couple of you were baptized in this church. If you were baptized in this church... Were you, Henry, were you baptized in this church? It's stuck. Oh, it's stuck. Okay. Uh, so some of you were baptized in this church. Some of you might have been baptized someplace else, and that's cool too. Um, and, but this is the moment at which we say that somebody is um, really, you're already really important to God, uh, but this is the moment at which we say you're part of the family, and we're committed to being the people who teach you about Jesus and help you to follow in God's path. Um, so that's what's going to happen today. I wanted you guys to see that. So what I want to ask you to do is if you are being being baptized today, if you would stay here with me, if you're being baptized next week, or if you're not being baptized today or next week, if you would go and either like sit in the front there, either on the floor or in the first pew or two so you can see, and if Mackenzie and Madison and Riley's family would come to stand with them, that would be very cool. And if you guys would kind of, yeah, can you... Go a little farther away because people are going to need to walk here. So you guys stay here. Riley, Madison, Mackenzie, you guys stay up here with me. And your folks are going to come too. And the people that are going to be supporting you, they're going to be with you right here. Yeah, that would be great. Perfect. Sure, why not? They can. They can. Now, Mackenzie and Riley and Madison brought some friends. <laughs> and I think it's always cool to have some friends who stand with you. Do you think so? Yeah, no one stands alone, right? Henry, you're not being baptized today. I know there is water. You're not being baptized today. Your day was a different day. Yeah, thanks. So, one of the things that we um, talked about a couple, a few weeks ago, right, was that um, a lot of times people who are baptized are either little bitty babies or they're grown-ups or at least teenagers. And you guys, are either any of you little bitty babies? Yeah. No little bitty babies. Anybody a teenager or a grown-up among you three? No. Okay, so what's to do, right? So we talked about that because when someone's baptized, if you're a little bit of baby, then somebody makes promises for you. Um, or, but if you're older, then you make promises for yourself. But if you're in between, um, you can know what you think and what you believe and what you want, but you can't always make it happen, right? For example, uh, can you guys read Bible stories by yourself? 
Not yet, right? Somebody needs to help you because you need to learn to read, right? And uh, what about, uh, can you get to Sunday school or Bible school by yourself? Have you learned to drive yet? You can drive a toy. Mm. I would not drive a toy on 108, just saying. Um, so somebody needs to bring you, right? So you need some help. So what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you guys some questions. And then um, in the simple form, like we talked about when I was over at your house. And then we're going to, as... Um, Ashlyn told us we're going to put water on your head and, uh, and say to God, this one, this person is yours. We're going to say that to God, okay? And, um, and then in a couple of minutes, when some other adults come up here, we're going to ask your mom and dad to um, answer some questions along with some other adults as well about our commitments to be um, uh, people who follow Jesus in our lives. Is that okay? That's what we're going to do. All right. So um, if you remember, we talked about this, and I said that, um, you know, there's evil in the world, and Christians are people who don't want to be a part of that. So do you believe that there's evil in the world and that you're a person who doesn't want to be part of it? And if that's true, will you say yes? Yes? Okay. And um, the next question kind of says, do you think that God is strong enough, even when you're not, that God is strong enough to keep you from being part of all the bad stuff that's in the world? Is God strong enough? If you think so, say yes. yes. Yeah, God is the strongest, right? Yeah. And then the last one is basically, do you believe in Jesus? Do you want to follow Jesus? Yes. How about you? Is that a yes? Yes. Yes. Okay. Awesome. And then uh, just actually one question right now for, for you all. Um, will you nurture your children in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example, they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves and profess their faith openly and lead a Christian life? And if so, will you say, I will. I will. Awesome. All right. Now, what did I tell you I was going to do? I said I was going to put water. Yeah, I did. Ah, all right. Who's first? Are you first because you're the oldest? Mackenzie, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit work within you that being born of water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Madison, are you next? Madison, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit work within you, that being born by water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you next? You're next. Okay. Riley, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit work within you that being born by water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. So, my friends, these are our newest members of the family of faith. We give thanks to God for all that God has already done in your life and will continue to do. And I have um, something for you. Um, you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a book that we give to people when they're baptized, and it's the same book, and you're going to have three of them at your house because I think that even when you have siblings, you should have some things that are your own. Is that right? You share a lot of things, right? But some things should be your own. So, and you have a certificate that's inside as well. So, Mackenzie, this must be yours because there's that one says that has your name. And Madison, this has your name. And Riley, this should have your name. It does. This is a book called Let There Be Light by Archbishop Desmond Tutu. And it's a beautiful book about uh, God in the world. And um, we like to share this with people. Wonderful. So um, I would like to ask, uh, you guys can sit down in the front if you want. And um, the rest of the entourage can go back to your, uh, to your spot, if you will. And you guys can stay here. And would the other folks who are joining the church today please come?
Why don't you sit there in the front pew with uh, maybe somebody will sit with you. And Penny and Oliver, you can come on up if you want. That's cool. Cool. <laughs> Good to see you guys. I know, those are big steps, aren't they, Penny? They are. They're big steps. <laughs> no water bottle, but here you are. So I would like to uh, just tell you who these folks are, and um, some of them you know already. Uh, many of you have known Stefan for years. This is um, Mary Stankiewicz's husband, Stefan, um, and he has a name. He's not just Mary's husband, but um, his, his name is Stefan, and uh, uh, he has been a member of the church in Laurel and has uh, transferred his membership. Actually, we already received him um, we received his transfer, but we haven't had an opportunity to have him uh, here in front and to introduce him properly before. So he's part of our group today. Uh, Virginia Bassler, some of you are going, what? <laughs> Raise your hand if you were going, what? <laughs> okay. Virginia's story is that she and um, Fred were actually married at Linden Church uh, a very long time ago, one of the predecessor churches, and the altar rail that is out there is the altar rail that they knelt at when they were married 67 years ago, 67 years ago. Um, and then Fred was actually a Lutheran, and they ended up going to the Lutheran church for a long time, and then uh, in 2000-ish, ended up coming back here, but never joined the church, and she thought it was about time. So, um, and we agree, yes. <laughs> this is Marianne. Marianne uh, has been, uh, I don't know, how long have you been with us? A year? Two? I see, I'm bad with things. Two years. Um, and Marianne comes from uh, Emmanuel Church in Skaggsville and um, has gotten really connected with outreach ministries. And we give thanks to God for her passion for people who um, are in need of whatever and uh, appreciate the way that she's leading in that area. Um, this is Gage, and he was supposed to be with his wife, Carrie, but baby Ina had a different plan. So Carrie, we know you're there, and you will respond at the appropriate time from home. Um, uh, baby Ina was not um, on the schedule that you guys, she was on her own schedule and not the schedule that they had planned. Um, uh, Gage and Carrie, um, as they told me at one point, had stalked us online for a while. Um, <laughs> remember telling me that? <laughs> yeah. Um, and have been, we have known each other in person for Oh, two plus years, going on three, yeah, for a while. And um, some of you may remember that Carrie actually um, uh, shared a message, a Sunday message uh, in the summer of 20, 2022 when I was um, away on my renewal uh, leave. So uh, uh, Gage is in the military and Carrie is a teacher at Glen Isle High School. And um, so we are happy to have them. And these are the mom and dad of the kids who got baptized. That's how it is when you have kids, right? You become, actually, but it's Amanda and Tom. And um, gosh, did we meet you all last fall, was it? Yeah, uh, shortly before Christmas. And um, so we uh, have appreciated getting to know this whole family. And it was a great joy. This is um, the third time in my life that I've had the pleasure of baptizing three siblings from the same family all at once, and so that was a great joy. So thank you for giving me that opportunity. Um, and I guess kind of, the, well, sort of, the I don't know, we met you all about the same time. We met you all in the fall, too. These are the Sandovals, and this is Penny, and this is Oliver. <laughs> and um, and so I think the first Sunday you were here was the day that we were, we had some kind of a party. Oh, I know, it was like yeah. the first day of Sunday school in September, I think, yeah. Um, and we had food, and we got to to chat at the, at the table. I remember that. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Um, so these are the folks that we're welcoming today. So I'm going to ask you all the adult questions now. Is that okay? 
um, because we were, uh, we think of um, membership as kind of an extension of baptism. You know, we're all part of the family through baptism. Um, and so uh, this is the adult form of what I ask the kids. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? And if so, will you say, I do? Carrie, did we hear you? Okay. Um, do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? And if so, will you say, I do? That's the, do you think God is strong enough question. And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? And if so, will you say, I do? And then, according to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world? And if so, will you say, I will? That's a biggie, isn't it? To serve as Christ's representative in the world? That's, I'm going to talk about that in a, in a few minutes. And So now a question for you all, and that'll, it'll be up on the screen. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in, your, in their care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. And now just to remind us of the classics of the Christian faith, let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? In the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And now I have two last questions. As members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? And if so, will you say, I will? And as members of this congregation, Lyndon Linthicum United Methodist Church, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? And if so, will you say, I will? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm just beyond tickled to say um, these are the newest uh, members of our family, uh, officially. I know there are some, some that have been around for a while, <laughs> um, and some who are brand new, and I believe that every time God sends somebody into a community, God wants that community to change a little bit as they receive the gifts of whoever that person is, and I look forward to see what happens. So, um, and Kristen has a little swag bag for each family, and to, a little welcome gift for you, and I hope Hope that everyone will uh, in the uh, lobby afterwards will enjoy some hospitality time. Introduce yourself. We asked you to wear a name tag today uh, to as a gesture of hospitality. Um, introduce yourself and make some new friends. And we give thanks to God for these new friends. Yay! <laughs> Are you pretty excited? <laughs>
was beautiful. Thank you, Dave and Kathy. Our scripture reading this morning is another account of Jesus appearing to his disciples after the resurrection. I'll be reading from Luke 24, verses 36b through 48. While they were saying these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were terrified and afraid. They thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you startled? Why are doubts arising in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. It's really me. Touch me and see, for a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones like you see I have. As he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Because they were wondering and questioning in the midst of their happiness, he said to them, Do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. Taking it, he ate it in front of them. Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law from Moses, the prophet, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the word of the people of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. My dear spouse, Dick, is probably going to take exception to what I'm about to say. So for all of you with legal backgrounds, I will apologize in advance for his strong belief in unflattering stereotypes about lawyers. <laughs> but here it is. Notwithstanding the fact that Jesus often enough made lawyers the poster children for how not to be his faithful followers, the lexicons of law and theology actually share quite a bit of words and concepts in common. I don't know if you've ever thought about that, but it's true. Confession is one such word, for example. We're not going to go there today. That would be for another opportunity. But I want to think about another word that appeared both in today's gospel and in our liturgy for new members this morning. And that word is witness. I don't know if you noticed that that uh, word came up twice, uh, once in the last question that I asked and once in the end of the reading that Kristen just read for you. It's a word that comes up in both law and theology, and though it's used for a different purpose in each case, the meaning is pretty much the same. A witness is someone who shares what they have seen to help other people who might not have been there or seen the same thing to understand what happened and to believe that it's true. That's what a witness does. And that's true in uh, the case of uh, law and also in the case of theology. Our scripture today is another one of the appearances of Jesus after his resurrection. The four gospel writers prevent, present various ones of these appearances, and in this particular telling, Luke says that the disciples were afraid when they saw him because they were thinking that they were seeing a ghost. They were afraid because they thought they were seeing a ghost. Jesus, being Jesus, reads the situation quickly. He knows he doesn't have a lot of time left with these precious followers and friends, and he needs to get them ready, uh, like right away, to be able to continue his work. So he gets close, physically close to them, close enough for them to touch him. He needs them to know that he's not a phantom. He's really there speaking to them, and they need to hear him and hear him well. They touch him and see him right next to them, his hands, his feet, his clothing. He's so familiar, but a little different too. And here's how Luke describes what happens. 
Luke says, because they were wondering and questioning in the midst of their happiness, he said to them, do you have anything to eat? Now that's kind of mundane, isn't it? We were talking about spiritual things. Say what, you need a snack, Jesus? We're trying to navigate wondering and disbelief and you want us to get you something to eat? What's that all about? One way to think about it is by considering the intimacy of a shared meal. In his culture, like so many others, inviting someone to your table is a sign of significant connection and relationship. And yes, I know, in this case, Jesus actually invited himself. So there is that. But hey, when you're Jesus, you can do that, right? You can invite yourself anywhere you'd like to be. This was Jesus' executive team, if you will, his closest partners in ministry, the future of his movement, of the church, and they are riddled with doubt and disbelief. But you know what? Jesus doesn't seem really worried about that. Not concerned about their belief or doubt for that matter at this moment. He invites them to touch and then expresses the desire to share a meal with them, some food. These are signs of belonging, that you would touch someone, that you would share food over at the table with them. The opening of the scriptures and the teaching are vitally important, of course, and that happens afterwards, after they had had something to eat. He opened the scriptures, it says. All of that is really important, but they come after the up-close and personal moments, the touching and the sharing of food. When the fear had been dispelled, the sense of belonging was taking over for all of them who were there. The disciples know who he is and who they are to him, and then they're ready to hear more, anything he has to say. The food thing is probably a bigger deal than we often think. Remember what Christ instructs us to do to share him until he comes again? It's not a lecture. It's not a sermon. It's not a hymn or a song or an anthem. It's a meal. Remember me this way, Jesus said, in a meal. To repeat regularly the act of invitation, of drawing together, of coming to the table and sharing food. It's at least partly about pausing, pausing long enough to lean in, to be touched and fed together, eating together, and not only the sacrament of communion is an essential part of Christian behavior. Now, you know the old joke, um, how do you know a Methodist? Uh, they like to sing and eat. Uh, those are the things that we're kind of known for. We like to sing and we like to eat. Uh, but that is a distinctively Christian behavior. Actually, both of those things. And it's essential part of the Christian life is to eat together right up there with caring for the poor and gathering for worship, all of that. And guess what? Even snacks count in this act of basic goodness. So it's important, for example, to pause and share a donut or a cookie with folks after worship on Sunday. It's a way of sharing that table fellowship. Why? Because in this, we make ourselves and the Christ within us available to be known in the community. When you're around the table or the coffee pot or the donut box, you belong. And where two or three are gathered, well, you know what Jesus says about that. I'm going to show up where two or three are gathered, just like he did with his first frightened followers. Our strength does not come from our certainty. Our faith is not about good etiquette or perfect table manners. It's about community. It's about identity. It's about belonging. It's about grace. And when we've touched grace and tasted community, then we're ready to be witnesses. The United Methodist Vows of Membership used to ask people if they would faithfully participate in a congregation's ministries by their prayers, presence, gifts, and service. And some years back, and I don't remember exactly when, uh, witness was added to that. Prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. And I will tell you honestly that that addition has made some people uncomfortable. 
because of what they think of. Now, I don't know what you think of when you think of witnessing, but it might be a guy with a placard preaching on a city corner. Does that image come to mind for anybody when you think about witnessing? Or it might be um, someone in a public place passing out tracts to random passers-by asking questions like, are you saved? Anybody have an image like that when you think about witnessing? Those kind of images come up for a lot of people and it makes us uncomfortable. A great many people find that awkward. Um, when somebody else does it, does it and they certainly don't want to do it themselves, I know that I feel that way. And I'm sure, I'm pretty sure, that it's not all that effective. Um, not all that effective, not the best kind of evangelism, of sharing the love of Jesus. But remember what Jesus did. He opened the scriptures to them, it says. He reminded them of what they already knew about him because they had been there. They were witnesses. They had seen with their own eyes what he had done. They had witnessed his ministry. He was helping them to understand how they could give their own firsthand account, which is all fine and good for them, but we weren't there, right? Anybody there? I don't think so. We were not among those first disciples. How can we be witnesses? We have to rely on the testimony of others. Or do we? This is a story about Jesus showing up. You probably, if you think about it, have stories like that of your own. When has the risen Christ been there for you? That's a story that you can share. Sometimes all you have to do is answer a question. For example, I have known people who have dealt with great losses and devastating illnesses and have maintained a hopeful, positive attitude. Do you know anybody like that? Inevitably, there are questions that come after that. And people say, how in the world do you maintain the way you are? How do you keep your spirits up? How do you keep going? And somebody will often say, well, I feel the loss or the pain just like anybody else, but I know that God is with me and I don't have to go through this alone. That's being a witness. That's telling your own story about how Jesus has shown up for you. I think of folks in 12-step programs who share their experience, strength, and hope with others who are still suffering with some kind of addiction. Sharing our own stories can require vulnerability, but it might be just what somebody else needs. To hear someone say, there is hope for you, just like there is and was for me, will you let me show you how you can get that help and that hope. That kind of vulnerability might save someone's life, literally. You are my witnesses, Jesus says. You are the ones who will share about me, who will invite people to change their hearts and lives and receive forgiveness. A witness is no more and no less than someone who shares what they have seen to help someone else to know it's true. That's all. You, my friends, are witnesses. You're witnesses to the saving love of God, delivered by a crucified and risen Savior who just keeps coming among us, meeting us at the table, in locked rooms, and everywhere we go. As people who belong to this Savior, you've been invited to his table. So how will we accept what we have received and witness to his love and power and acceptance. It's a work that's a precious gift to those who come after us. If those first frightened followers, the disciples, hadn't taken it up, where would we be? If they hadn't been witnesses, where would we be? How has this Savior made a difference for you? Don't be afraid to tell your story. Someone needs to hear it. You are Jesus' witnesses. Thanks be to God. Amen. When we pray, we invite God's spirit to be with us and we open ourselves to the movement of that spirit. And though it's true that God longs to hear from us in prayer, it's also true that the benefits to us as praying people are beyond what we can imagine or deserve. 
Let us open ourselves to the Spirit in song and in prayer. Spirit of God, we come seeking peace and love and comfort, light and life, hope and power. We trust your promise to bring new life to every part of our existence, and we want to be your servants. So much of life can be overwhelming, but we know that you can do what we can't, and today we join together to bring our prayers to you. We celebrate with joy our baptisms and receiving of new members today. We give thanks to you for these precious people and look forward to how it is that they will change this community to be more Christ-like day by day. We celebrate with Sam, her friend Aaron's 17th birthday. He's slowly regaining, regaining movement as he is still in the hospital and is surrounded by the love of family and friends. We give thanks for improvement. We pray for those who are <clears throat> struggling in various ways. With Tom and Gigi, we continue to pray for Derek, Tom's business par partner who had a stroke and is having a very difficult time. We pray that you will surround him with love and care and strength. We give thanks for his community. We pray with Joe and Sam for uh, Ryan's mother, Pat, in the hospital. We pray with Jeff for Anne, his mother-in-law, who is in late stage dementia and who fell this week and it broke some ribs. We pray that you will protect her and walk with her through this difficult time of her life. We pray for uh, so many things in the life of our community for our uh, growth and generosity effort in the church. We pray for the Cockrell family as they continue to mourn the loss of Frank. We give thanks for him and what joy and strength and encouragement he brought to this community for so long. We pray for the world with the escalating war, particularly in the Middle East. And we pray for, with Penny for Marty, following a recent unsuccessful surgery, that you would walk with him during this time. Gather our prayers together, O God, in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So what's been happening at LLUMC this week? Well, a lot of special stuff happened this morning, right? And is still happening. Um, 
And you're here to be part of this lovely celebration as we have welcomed nine new folks into membership and celebrated the baptism of three of God's beloved. And the really cool thing I have to share is that next week you're going to get to celebrate the baptisms of two. So that's just a very special time in the life of our community. Speaking of God's beloved, plans are underway for Frank Cockrell's memorial service, which will be here on Saturday, April 27th at 10.30 a.m. Thanks to all who have offered to help with the luncheon. There was a sign-up genius in your newsletter, and a sign-up sheet is also out in the lobby today, physical one. And you can speak to Anne-Marie if you'd like to help. Anne-Marie, would you pick it in the pretty pink sweater here if you want to uh, talk with her about the needs that would be great uh, thank you all for offering this uh, kind of hospitality to Elaine and family uh, as I mentioned last week the Judy Center which supports families of young children who need a bit of help is in serious need of diapers sizes four five and six Please bring your donations here, um, either on Sunday or during the week. Uh, if there's nobody in the office, you can always leave things in the breezeway outside of uh, Hilltop Child Care Center, and we will get those uh, diapers delivered to Judy Center. So sizes four, five, and six of diapers. We have been able to help them in times in the past, and it has been greatly appreciated. They, they reached out when they got to a critical need this time as well. So thank you for thinking about that. Grassroots Day Resource Center Pantry is in need of food items, and the list is up there. It's also, I think, in your newsletter this week. We have received some items in the past couple of weeks. We, if we, when we get a little bit more, we'll go ahead and get those things delivered. Thank you for supporting those people as well. And there are sign-up sheets also in the lobby for snacks for the next quality of life retreat for people with HIV and AIDS that will be held in May. It's a women's retreat. Loretta Anders is serving on the staff for that retreat. Please consider donating something. The snack table is a big hit always, and they are so grateful uh, for things to munch on during the retreat, retreat time. Our special offering for April is for UMCOR, United Methodist Committee on Relief. UMCOR is sometimes described as the United Methodist Red Cross, focusing on relief and restoration ministries in time of disaster. And uh, it's always, UMCOR always gets a, the highest rating on Charity Navigator. It's a, a great place to invest your dollars if you're trying to help people who are in a, a disaster situation. Now, I know I've just made a number of asks. Not every one of those is for every person. God will nudge you, I believe, to respond as you feel called to certain ministries. But this is what disciples of Jesus do. We do as Jesus did. We notice the needs of others, and we make it a priority to respond in whatever way that we can. Thank you for that. Your support of all kinds of ministries is a sign of the living Christ continuing to come to be present with people on earth, sometimes through our hands. Thank you for listening to God's spirit and for being faithful in your generosity. To give in person, there's an offering plate in the back of the sanctuary. To give electronically, go to our website and click on give. And thank you also to those who send gifts by mail. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks and praise for the presence of the living Lord among us. By your spirit who breathes within us, strengthen our faith, use our gifts, and work in our lives to bear witness in the world to the resurrection power of Christ our Lord. Amen. Our, clo our closing hymn is about one of the ways that we witness to the crucified and risen Savior by but drawing the circle wide and gathering a family of faith that has room for everyone. Please join us now in singing Draw the Circle Wide in the Worship and Sing Hymnal number 3154.
going to, uh, after the benediction, I'm going to ask if the new members would come up here for just a second so we can get a real quick picture. That would be awesome. And, um, and everybody, remember that it is the best of Christian behavior. It is following Jesus when you eat together. So please stop for a snack um, at the hospitality table. Go forth as Easter people. Let your life be a sign of Christ's life a witness to his expansive love so that others may come to believe that the Lord is risen indeed. And all God's people said, amen.